Welcome back to Ride and Glide. Today we're looking at the 2022 F37 model from Stealth Bikes. Stealth Bikes are a company um, based in Australia. These are hand put together in Australia, so they're really high quality. They come with a lifetime guarantee on the chassis, and then obviously a year or two year guarantee on everything else, so they really put their money where their mouth is um, and back themselves on their quality. This is exciting for us. We've been dealing with Stealth for a few years, and these are the newest models out. So they've upgraded their whole line, and this is the F37 model. First of all, we're going to take a look at it here in the studio. Obviously, it's pretty big compared to some of the things that we usually look at, so I'm going to have to sit next to it rather than sort of behind it and show you. Um, we'll go over it with the camera so you can see everything in detail. Then we're going to take it out. I'm going to take it out. I'm a novice rider, really. Like I obviously love riding them, but I'm not a highly skilled rider. And then we're going to hand it over to an expert to really see what it can do. Starting down at the bottom, as we always do, you can see we've got the 27 by 2.8 inch Schwab Eddy Current tires. These are epic for riding off-road. Look, big grip on them there, really high quality tires. Everyone knows Schwab, so excellent addition um, to the F37 from Stealth. Coming down from the tires, we come into the axle. There's no motor on these. They're at the rear, not on the front. You know, some scooters obviously have front and rear. Bikes generally on the rear or through the actual pedal themselves, like a mid-range uh, motor. But on here, we have the hub motor at the rear. What you can see is this enormous brake disc. Now, it's 250 mil by three mil, so you're not gonna get that bent. It's absolutely massive, and it's massive for a reason. Obviously, biting power for that big rolling radius there, but we've got these motorcycle grade brakes. Now, these are Mini Cross 65 four piston hydraulic brakes made for dirt bikes, basically, and pit bikes. The reason they've done that, you've got a heavy vehicle, you're riding it around, obviously off-road. When that weight goes forward, the old Magura bikes they used to use were fantastic, but you would burn through pads because they're really trying to stop this big weight moving forward. With these, they stop it with ease. They're gonna last longer and perform better. Four pistons, like we said. You've got the braided cable, which obviously stops expansion and contraction. Um, when the oil flows through it, when it gets hot, you've got the levers up here, which you can set to um, a long stroke or a short stroke for the biting point. So if you like to bite early and then press, or if you like to have a long stroke back and then press near to your handle, you can adjust that yourself. Huge oil um, cylinder up here, or master cylinder, with an oil level indicator as well. So these upgraded brakes are gonna make a huge difference to this bike. Really looking forward to going out uh, and testing them ourselves. But as well as the tires, we've got this brake upgrade as well. So for this 2022 model, things are looking good already. From the brakes, we move up to the suspension. Now this is motorcycle grade suspension to go with the tires and the brakes they've put on there. This is a Fast Ace ALX 13RC suspension. So that's the model, Fast Ace is the brand. They've used that on a lot of their previous models, Fast Ace, they've always had um, really reliable, solid suspension. So they've stuck with Fast Ace for this and the rear suspension's fast ace on this as well. So moving up to suspension covers, you can see here, we're gonna test that out later. Uh, it's a rebound adjustable as well, so obviously, and it's inverted double crown suspension, as you can see up here, we've got the double crowns. Um, and like I said, rebound adjustable, so you can set that from the top. Now, if you can see just behind the suspension arm here, we've got the charge port, which you just open, it has like a nice sort of water resistant cover there to close it. Battery is 48 volt by 30 amp, and it takes three hours to charge, so it's a really fast charge. They give you an enormous charger with a big amp um, output. So you can charge it just from a normal 240 uh, socket, and it only takes three hours, so that's brilliant. So you can actually carry it around with you if you stopped off at the pub, or wherever you're going, obviously private land only. Um, you can get a recharge whilst you're on the move as well. So talking about the battery, uh, as I said, it's 30 amp. You're looking like you're gonna get around 40 miles of range at approximately 30 miles an hour. That's what Stealth has said. We'll put that to the test ourselves. Um, but with that 48 volt, 30 amps, that sounds about right to us, depending on the speed you're going. Battery's housed in here in the main chassis. Now, Stealth give you a lifetime warranty on the chassis of their product. They really back it. Fantastic for your, um, you know, knowing that your money is safe when you're investing in a product like that with a company who's willing to back it to that level. Um, so really good from Stealth there. 
Coming down, this is pressed uh, steel here. Coming down here, battery's housing there, like I said. It's not removable. You can take it out, obviously. There are only these um, you know, five or six bolts holding it in, but it's not a clip-in, clip-out battery. But theoretically, you can get another battery and replace it if you ever wanted to do that and, ha and hold two batteries, but they're very heavy, about nine kilos. So not many people are going to want to be um, lugging that around with them. Nice uh, carbon fiber effect on the Stealth logo down here. At the top of the chassis is the key ignition. You get this key, you get a nice key ring, Stealth design on there and the logo, pop it in. And then it's actually also got kind of a water resistant cover on it, which is nice, it's rubber cover. Turn it on. Immediately what comes up is your VIN number. So you know the VIN number of your bike. Stealth keep that on record as well as do we. Uh, that's for security, but also you have to enter a passcode. It's a four digit passcode. If you don't enter that, the bike doesn't work. Once the code is in, you can hear that noise. That engages the display and the throttle. So now you're ready to go until you turn the key off. Gives you your miles per hour, gives you your battery, gives you your efficiency, so how much, when you're full throttle, how much that's burning of your battery, which is useful information. There's also a load of other features you can get into in that as well. You can read the manual and there's loads of stuff you can do, but they keep it very simple on there just so you can see your speed and battery very clearly. Now, one really useful thing about having the passcode is obviously security. People can't just grab your bike and ride off on it if you've turned it off. You turn the bike off there. That's a really good feature from Stealth. They're trying to protect their customers. They don't want people stealing these, obviously riding them or even selling them on the um, open market and making money out of their customers' loss. Also, the only place Stealth will sell products to in this country is to us, Ride and Glide, because we're the distributor. The same goes for Europe in those countries. So any parts anyone needs will come through us or an approved retailer that we've approved, or from Stealth Direct. That way they can control, if someone does steal a bike and needs a charger or another type of product to fix it, they can't do that without coming through a retailer or a distributor. And then that will trigger off alarm bells for us and we'll be able to trace that back to the bike uh, because we'll always ask for a VIN number. Now, there are a lot of fake stealth bikes on the market. People make low quality uh, models of them. There are hundreds coming out of factories all over the place. They're, you've got to be so careful. There is only one stealth electric bike make based in Australia. All of the others are just using the name, Stealth Bombers, F37, all that type of thing. So do be careful. We get a lot of people coming in here with a bike saying, oh, can you fix my Stealth Bomber? And we don't have any of the parts because it's just sort of a generic bike that they've bought thinking it's a Stealth bike online. And actually it's a low quality knockoff version that probably performs pretty well until it breaks and there's no way people can get parts for them. So do be careful when you are trying to purchase a Stealth bike that it is genuine. Moving down the chassis, we will come back to the seat. Obviously, we've got this design here where it sticks out. That's just part of Stealth's sort of futuristic design that they like. These bikes are actually used by a lot of the military around the world as well. So they have to have a Stealth. I know the name says Stealth. They have to have sort of a Stealth utilitarian look um, because they have to be super functional in pretty harsh terrain. Um, so I really like the design of this. Also keeps the air flowing. We've got the seat. The seat that comes with it is, I would say, pretty solid. Um, I would probably change the seat. Some people like this style of seat. It's very good for riding fast. Uh, I like a more squidgy seat to sit on, but then maybe that says what my type of riding style is like. Um, in between the uh, bracket that holds the seat is the rear suspension. Now, again, it's a fast ace, BDA 53RC, that's the model and you've got 180 mil of travel on here as well as 180 mil of travel on the front. So loads of travel on that suspension, which is amazing for off-roading, you know, really bumpy terrain, rebound adjustable, lock it out as well. So high quality suspension on a high quality bike. So what we're noticing about the bike, everything they use is trying to be as high quality as possible. As you come down to the suspension, you can see we come down to the crank at the back, which is got pedals on it. Now for an off-road motorbike or a dirt bike, you wouldn't expect to have pedals. The benefit of that, when you're using the throttle and you start pedaling, first of all, it actually gives you a boost. We'll show that on the video later, but also it saves battery. So if you're not pedaling and just going flat out, the battery will burn out at a certain speed. If you're pedaling, you're going to save at least 50% of your battery. Obviously, you're not going to be pedaling when you're going steep hills, but when you can, just going downhill or just on flats where it's easy, just turning your legs around is going to save 
all those amps from depleting in your battery, giving you much more range. So I should mention that there is an internal gearbox here, and it has two gears, so when you're pedaling, it will automatically select which gear you're in. And again, so if you're going really fast, it will select a higher gear just to allow you to, for the pedals to actually bite and be useful. When you're going slower, it will change down as well. So very, very clever function uh, from Stealth on that. It's one of their new additions to the 2022 bytes. The B52 has also got an internal gearbox where you can select the gear change with an up and a down, which is gonna be fantastic as well. The pedals are chain driven, going back here to the rear crank down there. And that, that takes us nicely back, let me just swivel on the chair again, to the rear hub motor. So DC series, brushless, it is 2000 watt nominal power, 3700 watt peak power. So it's pretty powerful. You know, if we compare that to a lot of scooters that we do, that would be like having a thousand watts in front and a thousand watts in the back. So you'd expect it to be hitting sort of 35 to 40 mile per hour. Um, really high quality motor they've used here. Again, we've got the huge rear discs with the four piston brakes. You know, we said those mini cross 65s, which we spoke about earlier. We come to the top of the bike and we've got the headset here, really strong aluminum forged. We've got the swept handlebars, nice and wide for grip. Standard grips on them, but very comfortable. As we've talked about, we've got the levers which we can set and adjust. I quite like a, a low bite, or a, I'd say maybe a high bite actually you'd call it, so quite a bite quite high up. I don't mind having my fingers far out from the grips. Some people wanna have their fingers very close to the grips. This side we've got the throttle. It's a half twist throttle. So you don't twist the whole of the grip, you've got half grip here, and then you go there. So you still bite, I like that because you can still have your hand biting on the actual grip and half your hand is twisting. So obviously full throttle, it's gonna be using all the power, but it's a graduating throttle, so you can just use small amount of power if you want to and grade it up as you see fit. So like I said, ready to go out and try this now. I'm gonna try it first, have a burn around in the forest, uh, and then we're gonna hand it over to someone that really knows what they're doing um, and get their thoughts on it as well. So I'll see you out there. So I made it into the forest. First little rip, some Ground's a bit harder now. We've had a week of dry weather. It's still, still wet, but it's definitely harder than it was the last time we came out. It's very bumpy. It's loads of flints out here. So we're gonna uh, push it a little bit harder as we get out into the open. And see what the 2000 watt motor can do. It feels so safe. I ride scooters around here all the time. Being on a bike, it's much more stable. Obviously it's gonna go faster. You're sitting down, there's something about it that just makes you feel locked in, right? We're on the wider trail now, off we go. Lots of tractor tracks here. Real deep ruts coming up, real deep ruts. Whoa. Gripping well. Here we go, big roots here. Letting that suspension work. Woo Pretty hectic terrain, this. Massive roots, loads of mud, whoa! Jeez, it gets through everything, everything. I've not been on a vehicle that can handle this terrain before like this one is. Nothing we've got would ride through this mud. This has got horse hooves all over it. Look at the state of it. It's just eating it up really in the forest now. There's loads of debris on the floor, slippery, but very cool. So much fun. It's just allowing me to go places I couldn't go. It seems to just eat everything up. I mean, you cannot believe the stuff I'm rolling over here. You can pick your line so much better. You see, it's like a, it's like a wrecking ball. I'm taking the scenic route. Logs, stumps, debris. But it's just eating it all up. To go a bit wider here come back wow it's like an exploring bike it's like obviously it's quick but it's not you know like crazy fast but you can just get everywhere you want to go sort of easily and quickly you know we've gone through some really tough terrain today and it just eats it up absolutely eats it up if you want the power it's there Woo! So even like, you know, on other products, you couldn't do this, but you can just drop down into the, into the horrible stuff and then come straight back out again. The wheels are massive. They just eat everything up. The motor's powerful enough. It just handles it. You can change your lines 
as you go. So for someone like me, who isn't like a hardcore rider, just loves coming out in the forest and exploring, it's just perfect. So we just stopped for a second just to watch it pull away. So I'd like you to see, I'm gonna go full throttle. I'm about 90 kilos of all the gear on, just to see you pull it away. So three, two, one, here you go. No pedaling, just going. 13, 20, Woo! I thought the pedals would get in the way more, but they just don't. You just get used to it. Coming out onto a harder path now. There's grip in this well. I'm gonna go into the leaves. It seems to be more fun when you're on the off-road bits with this bike. It's all it's built for. Eating up uneven terrain. So we're out on a hard path now. Just seeing what it feels like. Just absorbs all the bumps. I'd put a softer saddle on, to be honest, Stealth, you could have given some fenders on here because <laughs> I'm covered when we went through the puddles. But it's just so comfortable. You just feel like it's just going to be able to go anywhere you want to go. We're going 15, 16 miles an hour now, just cruising. Suspension's eating up these big bumps. It's still a bumpy road. Deer just run out in front of us there. There's nothing better. Blue bells are starting to come out. Such a lovely place to ride and a perfect vehicle to do it on. Can nip onto the grass if I want to. It's just the same. Back onto the road and now I'm going to do the speed test. I'm going to go full throttle. Here we go. Jeez, it says it goes 37. I just got 42. But if you can see, it's a slight downslope. On the upslope on the way there, I could get 36, 37. Good Jesus, that is so much fun. The brakes are brilliant. As you stop there, I mean, I skidded that on purpose a bit at the end. They just grip. The bike feels well balanced. The power's there. I mean, it's not the B52. We know that. It's a 2000 watt motor, but it's got some punch. It just handles with ease. I keep saying it. Big dip here. You don't know what's down there, but you not too worried. Now, as long as it's not a big tree stump, it's going to eat up pretty much everything. There's branches coming up here. Eats them in the thick mud now. This is wet, really wet. It's just burning through, burning through. Going uphill now. We're going to head round to the right. And we're going to go down a steep hill and see if we make it back up. We've been riding for an hour and a half. I got 47% battery left. So that's pretty good. Very steep now, just on the brakes. Just got to feather the brakes down. Are you still filming? It's tricky for everyone. We've got a one-wheeler filming, trying to ride down a really steep hill. Get down to here. Right, I'm going to turn around and come back up. You wait there, okay? So I'm going to start on the hill. So we're not starting from a flat start. We're starting actually on a hill. It's pretty steep, this bit. The next bit's steeper. We'll see what the motor can do. We're at 40, 45% battery. Let's go. Here we go, up to the camera. We go past the camera, up the really steep section. Oh, it's no problem for this bike. One thing that's really nice, I'm on seriously bumpy ground here, you can hear my um, voice shuddering. The suspension is making it a lot easier, it's farmer's tracks. But the pedals have little um, spikes on them, not spikes, but you know, like not metal knobs, sat on top that just give you so much grip. We've been through wet terrain, really muddy terrain, dusty terrain, and my feet feel locked in. And we don't have straps on these pedals. They're literally just sat on top. So it's a really nice feature. And look where you're able to go on it. Just cruising for a field, really rough ground. So after a couple of hours of fun in the woods, 37% battery left. Coming to a conclusion now, unfortunately. I wish we could stay out all day. It's so nice to ride this bike. I'm an amateur, like I said, you know, I like mountain biking stuff, but I'm not, you know, I don't have the skills or maybe I'm too scared to push this thing to its absolute limit. But for me, oh man, it's freedom, absolute freedom. I'm about to hit some of the roughest cow pat tracks. It just eats them. What else can you do that? I mean, I'm sure there's loads of products, but for me, this is fantastic. What we're gonna do, is give it to someone that really knows what they're doing so you can see what its capabilities are, how far it can be pushed, and hopefully see what its limits are. I'll let them take it from here. Welcome back to Riding Glide. We're here in sunny slash snowy Sussex uh, with Danny. 
Um, he's been trying out the Stealth F37. Um, so Danny, if you could just tell us a little bit about your previous exploits on two wheels. Well, I'm an ex-semi-pro motocrosser. Raced motocross for 30 years from schoolboy level right up into semi-pro racing from all over Europe and America. Great. So we're looking forward to seeing what the F37 can do on this great track we've got here. Back at the brow of this beautiful jump here. As I'm sure you've seen, Danny's been sending it big and putting the F37 through his paces. So what do you think, Danny? Oh, the bike's a great, great bike to ride. It's, it's steady, it's smooth, it's quite controllable, and it's, yeah, just easy, like, and wants to go fast. <laughs> That's what we like. So coming from your sort of motocross background, when could you see yourself riding something like this? Well, I think um, I was motocross, on motocross tracks, it's probably a bit too much, but on cross country courses, it'll be amazing. Yeah, so for sort of hacking it across country and sort of real extreme sort of mountain bike. Yeah, definitely. Great. We've had a great day here down in Sussex. We're looking forward to coming back and seeing what Danny can do with the B52 next time. In the meantime, you want to check out the rest of the stealth range or come and demo the F37, check us out in Worthing, West Sussex, or visit the website, which is www.rideandglide.co.uk. Thanks for tuning in again. Leave a like, a comment and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.